Hi, this is Dr. Chin making a video uh, covering some examples in chapter two as we uh, explore the data set in preparation for um, doing some longitudinal uh, data analysis. As shown here on the screen, um, uh, the data sets um, and the examples, uh, they're all coming from this book called Applied Longitudinal Data Analysis by uh, Singer and Willett. Um, and the uh, UCLA Advanced Research Computing uh, Statistical Methods and Data Analytics uh, people, um, they have been awesome in terms of being able to provide really all kinds of uh, syntax uh, that accompanies the uh, textbook. So the reason why I'm making this video is so that my own students will be able to <coughs> um, have some type of a uh, video guidance uh, in order to walk through the different steps of doing longitudinal data analysis, at least according to Singer and Willett. As you can see here, uh, their website, which is right here, um, actually has um, syntax for SAS, data, R, and SPSS. I'm going to go ahead and use R um, as an example here, given that R is just very flexible and um, uh, free and easily available. The only downside to R is that I know sometimes the uh, packages and the application don't sync up really well uh, because it's open source. And so sometimes the uh, developers of the packages don't always communicate with each other and with the developers of R and, and R Studio. But having said that, um, I really like to use R. It's a great um, application to run uh, different types of stats. And for this particular, um, uh, this particular tutorial, uh, using these resources here on the website, uh, we're just going to use R. Uh, and we're going to cover some of selected examples in chapter two. Uh, basically, I thought these were um, examples that would be most relevant or useful uh, in exploring your data set prior to um, you know, testing out a multi-level model. So these are ways of basically visualizing various things and exploring your data set prior to conducting a multi-level uh, model of analysis. So first of all, uh, a quick uh, overview on the data set uh, that we are going to be working with. Uh, data comes from five waves of data collection from the National Youth Survey. Uh, basically, each year participants ages 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, they filled out a nine item instrument uh, that's designed to assess their tolerance uh, towards deviant behavior. Uh, so the way in which this works in, in that particular survey is that it uses a four-point scale uh, with higher ratings indicating higher tolerance towards deviant types of behaviors. And so they indicated uh, whether it was wrong for someone their age to engage in a variety of conduct-related types of uh, symptoms like um, cheat, sorry, that's a type of cheat on tests, uh, destroying property, stealing something, breaking into a building, so on and so forth. And at each occasion, on each wave of, of uh, data collection, uh, the outcome, which I think the abbreviation is uh, TOL, uh, is computed as the respondents average uh, across these nine items or these nine responses. That's what we'll see in, in the data set essentially. <coughs> so that is the outcome of interest. In terms of the predictors of interest uh, for these examples in chapter two, we'll look at gender, uh, and in this data set, it's a binary variable with male coded as zero, female coded as one, uh, and exposure. So exposure is supposed to represent their own self-reported exposure to deviant even behaviors at age 11. And so for this question, uh, participants basically estimated the proportion of their friends who were involved in each of those same nine activities that we just talked about, except just rating it on a, on a slightly different four-point scale with higher ratings indicating um, higher exposure to deviant behaviors. Um, just like the uh, previous uh, variable that I talked about for, for tolerance, um, their value of exposure uh, in the data set is basically going to be the average of the nine responses at each particular data point. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, start R in R Studio uh, as we basically, first of all, try to um, upload the data set, take a closer look at data. It's always a good idea to um, 
uh, take a closer look at your data set. Be familiar with the nuances, the ins and outs of your data set. So we'll do that prior to replicating a couple of uh, tables and figures uh, to help us explore the data. <coughs> so this is R in our studio. Um, the uh, R version that we're using is 4.2.0, which at this point is the most up-to-date version of R. Um, our studio is based on 2021.09.0 or, or Ghost Orchid. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, make a new file. Now I like to use R Markdown because it allows me to um, add in different hittings and tables and all of that. Um, um, let me try that again. Um, let's go to our markdown. That's what I was looking for. Let's just call this chapter two. <coughs> um, let's call it chapter two for now. We want this to output in Word in case we decide to knit it together. Okay. So um, first of all, let's create and save the R markdown file in the same directory where the data set is at. Uh, the data set is, um, again, that can be found on the UCLA website. I've saved it on my computer, so I need to uh, locate where it is. So I'm gonna go hit file, I'll click save as, look for the folder where I've saved it at. This two. So usually when you save the R markdown file in the same folder as the data set, you don't need to set the working directory, but sometimes I like to do it just in case. So set working directory. our chunk over here. And it's usually the easiest to just go ahead and copy and paste the uh, file location. This is where I saved the R markdown file and the actual um, data set uh, is actually these two data sets here. This is a person level data set and this is a person period data set. We'll use them both, uh, but mostly rely on the person period data set. So let's go ahead and <coughs> click on get info. Let's see over here. at your working directory. Uh, let's go ahead and import. All this tolerance, the read table function. separators in this particular data set are commas, so it will indicate that as well. Let me show you where it's at. So this is the actual data set. Um, and you can see here that the um, separators are commas in this uh, text edit file. And the, um, the um, titles or the names of the variables are at the very top over there. So that, oops, I had a typo. Okay. Let me go ahead and do that again. So we got a clean slate here. Okay, so we got a data set with 16 observations. This is a really small data set um, with eight variables. 
and um, let's take a closer look here uh, as to what's what's going on. Let's use the summary function. Let's script this. I'm already followed by the name of the uh, data set. And so we've got ID uh, followed by the variables tolerance at time point one, time point two, three, four, five. Uh, and we got male, uh, that's just the name of the gender variable. Uh, and exposure is the other variable. Um, let's, view, let's view the data set. So this is how it looks like. Um, so as you can see, this is actually a person level data set. So just like a regular data set format that you would see in most data sets in SPSS. Um, uh, and the, the types of um, data set that's usually uh, outputted by you know, different survey types of uh, softwares. So each row represents the data, the data coming from um, each person. Um, if you're wondering how we're going to um, uh, um, uh, transform this into a person period data set. I have another video uh, that basically walks you through on how to um, transform this from person level to person period. Uh, for, for, for today, I just, I just went ahead and, um, and I believe the, the, the data set, uh, there's a person period data set that's also available on the website that you should be able to uh, pull from as well. So let's go ahead and import the person period data set. It is the other data set that's also in here, which is tolerance underscore tolerance one underscore pp, just to show you how it looks like. So notice now that each person has several rows uh, to indicate the different um, uh, tolerance values that the person is giving at the five time points. Go ahead and import the person period data set. So we want to include the headers in there. That's right. Scriptives. That is period. So now we got age, tolerance, male exposure, and time. View the data set. So this is how it looks like. Um, We've got age, lounge child, 13, 14, 15. Um, the tolerance values for each of those ages, the time variable corresponds to that as well at time point zero, one, two, three, and four. Uh, and then it just kind of repeats itself. So notice here that obviously for the same person uh, in this particular example, um, the uh, gender stays the same. Um, if there are um, variables where um, you might want to change um, this variable as it changes over time or exposure as it changes over time. There are ways in which we can do that. Uh, I'll, I'll look to, um, to make some videos to include some time bearing predictors. Uh, so it's so a quick preview on, on what's to come next time. All right, so let's go ahead and what's the next step here? Um, Let's go ahead and reproduce this table here. So this table 
is a uh, table of bivariate correlations uh, between all the tolerance scores assessed at five measurement time points. And so notice uh, with the rows and columns, um, we were basically just running bivariate correlations between um, you know, the tolerance score at time point one with time point two, three, four, and five. Uh, and so to do this, we're actually going to work with the person level data set to run this analysis. Um, so it's not that difficult. Let's call this table point one, page 20, bivariate correlations. Best. So the function is COR for correlations and the data set is tolerance. This is the person level data set. Um, first, this is space after the opening brackets to indicate that we want to, you want to do this for all rows. Uh, but only for columns two through six, because columns two through six is where the variables are <coughs> between um, tolerance values at time point one all the way to time point uh, five. So run correlations on this data set for everyone for these columns two through six. And this is basically what we get. Um, for the tolerance values, at, um, sorry, the correlation between all, uh, the tolerance values at all of the uh, measurement time points. So notice here the correlation between tolerance one and tolerance two is 0. 0.657. So that's pretty close, that's 0. 0.66. And the tolerance correlation between, uh, between time point one and three is 0. 0062. So that's 0 0.06, so it's pretty close. So that's how we would uh, basically run correlations uh, between the, the um, uh, time point scores. Uh, and here, what we, would, what we would expect typically is um, higher correlations between the time points that are closer together. So obviously it would make sense uh, for the correlation between um, the tolerance scores at time point one and two to be the highest. Uh, compared to the other pairwise comparisons in there as well. So this is just, this is what they call autocorrelation, uh, or sometimes some people might call it inertia, uh, to indicate that, you know, your score, uh, or, you know, or, you know, how you, um, the, the construct of interest uh, is typically tied through time. And so with a closer measurement time point, you get a higher correlation between those time points. So next, we're going to replicate this time, this <coughs> um, empirical growth plot here. So remember, remember we have actually 16 uh, participants. And so if you have a um, data set that has, you know, more than 16, uh, you, you probably want to do a, a random selection a subset of individuals in your data set to be able to kind of visualize um, what, the, uh, what the trends may be over time. So for this one, given that we have only 16, we'll just use all of them. Uh, basically, we'll create these growth plots for every single person. So a person with ID9, for example, uh, we're plotting their tolerance scores from ages 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, and we're doing the same for every single person. The reason why we do this is to um, just, just to have a visual of if it's reasonable for us to super, superimpose a linear type of relationship between time and uh, our outcome of, of interest. Um, <coughs> and so again, we're just kind of exploring the data, looking to see how it looks like at ground zero. Uh, and just, just really nice for us to have a sense of how it actually looks like before we start imposing some, some model parameters on our data sets. All right, so what is it? Figure, figure 2.2, page 25, vertical growth box.
do is we need to um, install the package uh, lat lattice. If I already have it installed, but I'm just running the code just to show you how it looks like. The next step is to um, uh, uh, upload the, the package that we just downloaded. <coughs> so the function library to upload that, that package. And um, from that package, we're going to call upon xy plot as a function for us to create this empirical growth plot. So we're going to regress tolerance till this side on age. So regress tolerance on age, or at least plot uh, tolerance on age. Sorry, not regress. We're going to plot tolerance on age. Um, I'm going to split this according to ID. So that's what the vertical bar is for. And the data set is going to be the uh, person period data set, not the person level data set. Okay. Make this as a table in terms of this format. And this will be that. So this should. Um, this should give you uh, basically the uh, empirical growth plots uh, for each person. And so you can sort of eyeball with this and see, hmm, you know, is the is tolerance going up, going down, staying the same overall? Uh, what we might do is we might um, uh, try to superimpose uh, an ordinary least squares. Um, a regression model for each of this person here. So we actually have a line that can tell us uh, if things are actually going up. And this, this to kind of let us know uh, if a straight line would actually be a, a, a decent summary of the pattern that we, that we have over here. So to do that, first of all, we need to fit uh, for every single person, um, a within person OLS, OLS uh, regression model. So let's do that first over here. So what we want is basically to get something like this. It's the same plots, except now we have um, a straight line. So it's, it's, it's a few steps before we get to that. As you can see over here, I do want to show you we can make some some stem and, and, and leaf plots over here, um, which is basically giving us a distribution of the regression parameters uh, for each person. But first, let's um, fit separate uh, within person or OLS regression models first, um, so that we can start pulling some of our parameters here uh, for visualization purposes. So let's call this fit. One of the limitations of ordinary least squares is that um, ordinary least squares assumes <coughs> that there is no autocorrelation between the time points one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and so we'll actually use a different type of estimator. And, and this is part of the reason why uh, we use a multi-level model as well um, for us to be able to um, take into account the autocorrelation between the time points. But for right now, just for visualization purposes, just for exploring purposes, we'll just use um, OLS. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the data set <coughs> into uh, frames based on ID, and then we're going to create a function um, uh, to, to um, basically uh, capture the within person OLS regression models for each person. And so uh, syntax is uh, uh, split by tolerance.pp. So that's the data set. Specifically, we are going to um, split it by ID. So space as in for all people. But by D. 
we're going to create a function called x, and this is the function itself. It is a uh, summary lm, which is basically a, a linear regression. Uh, oops. Uh, tolerance to be regressed on time, which is the variable in the data set. Data equals to x. And something else somewhere. Oh, it's a double comma here. Okay, so there you go. So for example, what we're doing, like I said, is we're superimposing a regression model for each particular person, a linear regression model to be exact, where um, tolerance is being predicted by time. So over here in the console, you can see the results. So for example, um, for a person with ID 314, um, this is the regression model here, tolerance regressed on time. Uh, and we have the intercept, which is basically the value of tolerance at, um, uh, at time point one. And time, this is the estimated uh, parameter based on ordinary least squares regression to uh, depict the relationship between uh, time and tolerance. So. For this particular one, it's actually not, not statistically significant. So uh, basically for person with ID 314, uh, time does not go together with uh, tolerance for this particular person because it is not statistically significant. Let's find one where it might be statistically significant. Maybe this one. Okay. <clears throat> so for person with ID 514, uh, at time 0.1, his tolerance uh, average score was 1.43. And as we go from age 11, which is the first time point, to age 12, so every time when time increases by one unit, the tolerance score increases by 0.26 units as well. Uh, and so that, that, that's basically what we're doing. We're superimposing a linear regression model uh, on each person because you want to be able to pull that regression line and superimpose that on the empirical growth plots. Um, what what's, uh, Singer and Billet also recommends is that we create stem plots. Uh, stem plots for the intercept. Uh, we create stem plots for, for the uh, fit the rate of change. So this is the slope. And stem plots for the R squared statistic and the residual uh, variance. <coughs> for this particular example, um, I'm just going to show you how to make stem plots where you fit the initial status rate of change and the r square statistic so that was that making a stem plot for the intercept So we're gonna make a list called int. This is gonna be um, similar to the function that we just wrote just now. Everyone that is by ID, we create a function called theta. We want to pool the coefficients for the regression model, the tolerance being repressed. We messed up something right here. P. One more thing here. We need to put one in these brackets. 
to indicate that we would want to pull the intercept. Let's try, let's see what happens. All right, we're going, we are going. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to transform this list that we just created into a vector. So to do that is simply uh, the unlist function. We are going to um, strip the names from the elements in the vector as well. So we use the function. And um, we use the stem function to create the stem and leave plot for the um, intercept. <coughs> equals to two. The decimal point is one digit to the left of this vertical bar here. And so the way in which you read this is um, um, with a standard leaf plot, as you see the numbers here increase, you see uh, basically uh, values uh, that, have, that are similar, um, or at least you should see here a spread of the um, and then the range of intercepts that you have in your um, uh, coming from your uh, regression models here. So that should look pretty similar to this initial status right here. So over here, because remember the decimal point is one digit to the left of the uh, vertical bar. So you should read this as 0 0.95, which is the bottom. So we actually have this, this opposite. Um, so we've got one, um, uh, person with the intercept 0 0.95, another person with the intercept, um, uh, let's see here, with the intercept 1.0, um, zero, and another one, 1.03, so on and so forth. So what we do see over here is basically a spread of the intercept values with most people having about 1.1, 1 1.1 um, 1 .1 in terms of the intercept. So that, that gives you the mode of the uh, intercept values here. Uh, let's do the same thing, except for the uh, slope instead. Call this rate FEP. The coefficients in this regression model. It's two to indicate that oops maybe you want to pull the slopes instead of the intercept. Then we're going to um, transform uh, this list that we've created here into a vector. Then we're going to strip off the names of the elements in that vector by using the names function. Uh, 
then use the uh, end function in the step plot for slope this time. Okay, so as you can see, most of our slope <coughs> tends to be in the uh, zero point one range um, over here. So close to close to zero actually in terms of the spread for your decimal points. That should be pretty similar to this one, except this is just upside down. Last but not least, let's make a stem plot um, for the R square as well. PP, we want everyone. It's for person. indicate that you want to pull the R square by uh, using the dollar sign R square. Okay, let me see if I got this syntax right here. Similar thing as before, we're going to um, transform this list into a vector. The names uh, in this vector using a names function. A step plot. So as you can see, most of the R squares, R squares uh, statistic is uh, closer towards uh, 0 0.8 actually in terms of the R square. So that's it's not too bad um, in terms of the uh, the, the simple OLS uh, regression model to account for the variability uh, in your data set. So that should give you a sense of the spread of these important uh, model parameters for the um, intercept, for the slope, and for the R square statistic. So again, why are, we, why are we doing all this? We're doing all this so that we can actually superimpose a, um, a, a straight line uh, for every single person who has a regression um, Line to it in a plot so that we can get a visual comparison of your longitudinal trends. So we're gonna um, basically hopefully get get to something that looks a bit similar to this. This is again the exact same thing as the uh, initial empirical growth plots, just that this time around we're gonna superimpose a straight line for each person across all five data points. So something like this. It's figure 2.5, H32. So LS trajectories superimpose on Back to using x y plot as a function <coughs> with tolerance being, being plotted based on h. We'll do this separately for each id. Data is the tolerance. 
index.pp, which is your person pair data set. And we need to use specify. As a function of x and y. Panel, we want the regression line. Um, y limb over here is to constrain the y axis to particular numbers. <coughs> and so and you're, we're going to constrain the y axis. Um, to one through four to facilitate the uh, visual comparison here. Symbol messed up, messed up something. See the whole plot. something. If you're watching this video, feel free to skip ahead while I try to troubleshoot what's going on here. All right, I'm not sure where I'm messing up over here. I'm just going to go ahead, go ahead and copy and paste my um, notes over here, the syntax. Um, it's probably some random space or a comma that I put somewhere in there, um, but the, the uh, rationale should be the same. Okay, so we have uh, created plots and where are you? This plot, there you go. So these are the um, superimposed O OLS lines for each person. And so <laughs> you can kind of take a step back and take a look at this. And um, it's kind of see if you see any particular trends uh, for the straight line regression here. And it does kind of look like um, as, as year increases uh, that the tolerance for uh, the even behavior tends to uh, increase as well. For this person, it's definitely increasing quite a bit. Some people are kind of, um, not really changing a whole lot, but it seems like either you're changing a lot or not changing at all. But that seems to be the trend here. Okay. So next, what you can do is we can try to replicate um, 
the these two types of uh, graphs here. And the first one is is a uh, non-parametric empirical growth plot, just kind of smooshing everyone's uh, data into one particular graph. Uh, this is what happens when you when you superimpose a, a straight line over here. And so uh, we'll just walk through the steps of how to replicate this first, and then we'll replicate this. Um, our graph is not going to produce these really smooth lines here, but at least the lines will be more uh, faithful um, to these specific data points in your um, in your in in your in your data set. So this is Figure two point six. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Let's try that again. Figure 2.6, four. that we are going to basically use the interaction plot we first specify the um, x variable dollars dot pp uh, dollar sign h p uh, separately for each id This is going to be tolerance. Not too bad. Somewhat similar to this. So we're not in this particular one. Uh, we're not forcing a straight line for each person. We're trying to stay faithful um, to the um, all the nuances in regards to the ups and downs. Uh, for from time period one through five. Now, if you wanted to get something like this, uh, we need to go through a couple of steps. So first of all, we need to um, fit the linear model by ID. I'm going to split the data set into separate frames based, uh, based on ID, and then create a function to fit separate within person or LS regression models. So similar to before. Everyone is an ID. Then we're going to transform this uh, list that we just created to a vector. And we are going to plot a graph. Oops. Interaction plot. Same thing as before. Each it is separately by ID. And then the y axis is going to be, or the, at least the, the response variable is going to be based on 
the predicted y based on your regression model. So that's <coughs> fit is coming from here. So name the x-axis as h. I messed something up here. Let's see. <coughs> comma, unexpected comma. There you go. And voila, this gives us the um, empirical growth plots. Now I'll just kind of switch into one particular graph. So that should look similar to this one right here. So, Let's go ahead and work on these graphs right here. Um, what we'll do is I will show you how to do it um, for maybe one variable and then the second variable. I'm gonna go through every single graph right here, but hopefully as you work on one, uh, you can figure out how to do the other one. So first of all, maybe work on making this graph. So we're making an empirical growth plot um, for females only. And then for this one, we're making an empirical growth plot for people with high exposure um, based on their score on that, on the variable at the beginning. So let's work on this one first, making a, a, a making an empirical growth plot uh, specifically for the subset of females. And so you do this if you wanted to explore you know, specific groupings uh, regardless of whether you're grouping this based on a binary, binary variable or some type of, of continuous variables where you're just splitting it into half. So let's say um, empirical growth plot. The first step is to want to a subset. We need only females. Call this pull fm subset function subset the tolerance.pp data set. The females are designated as one on that particular variable. And then we're gonna split the set. Separate frames. Function called data. Put this separate within person. Well, OLS regression models. So, FM, this, by that data set that we, that we just created. It's by ID. Data. On the Fitted values for the individual regression. Um, so that's or 
uh, we're going to form from vector <coughs> and this function. And we're going to regress. Let's see here. Tolerance on I. We're trying to do here is that we're trying to basically append the average for the whole group for our graphing purposes. Let's try it. Um, we want the values for tolerance and time on the data set toll fm. We can call this lm.fm. See here, what did I mess up? Yeah, so I think that should be it. Oh. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the names. Remove names function. We're gonna do a couple of things here. So first of all, we combine the fit fm unlisted fitted values. This is the predicted y. We remove that from lm.fm. According to the data points for each individual. That's for dot fm2 using the C function to combine the columns. So fit fm with ln.fm one through five. That's my bad. Going to create a new matrix. This time, combining columns from the whole data set and then adding a variable that repeats the number down through 15 are the, the values of the time variable. Start FM. 
One more new matrix. This time I need the column ID and then variable that repeats number one, 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 five times. This is the ID for this average person that will represent the average. Oops. And Um, I'm going to plot this graph right here. Interaction dot plot. I'm going to call all those objects that we just created. H dot FM, which is coming from this one. This is the um, uh, combining the column H from the total FM data set and adding a new variable that repeats number 11 through, through 15. ID dot FM. Um, so h.fm, id.fm, fm2, upper and lower limits of the y-axis here, before, labels, LWD is basically um, the width of the lines. The title. Stop somewhere again. H.fm, ID.fm, fit.fm2, MC04. This side here. Let's see if this works. Hmm. Not sure why. Again, just for the interest of time, I'm probably missing some random comma um, somewhere. But right, we'll get something like this, which is basically this particular uh, graph right here. Um, that is the um, empirical growth plots based on the OLS regression lines. And so if you wanted to do this for males, you go through the same process, except for when you're selecting a, a subset of the data set, uh, you make sure that you code it accordingly. So instead of one, it'll be zero. Um, and if you wanted uh, to create something for the exposure variable, where this is more like a continuous uh, variable, you would just need to split the data set, uh, you know, however you would want to best split it. And so you can make different versions of these uh, empirical growth plots um, in order for you to, again, visualize to see if it might make sense <laughs> for you to use any of these <clears throat> specific 
uh, predictors, um, or variables as predictors in your data set. So I know I said that I was going to um, do one for everyone, but I'm just about to run out of time. Um, feel free to let me know if you have questions about these steps right here. Again, the syntax is all on the, on, all on the UCLA website, the data sets, as well as the um, syntax. Um, I'll also post what I can post on, on my OSF as well uh, to help you all walk through these steps here uh, in recreating some of the examples from chapter two. So I hope you found this helpful uh, and let me know if you have questions.